Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. And this is your Royal Daily News for July 29th, 2022. In Birmingham, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal and Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence, along with their Royal Highnesses the Earl and Countess of Wessex, attended Day 1 of the 22nd Commonwealth Games. This morning, the family watched a rugby match between Scotland and Tonga held at the Rugby Sevens. Earlier in the day, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal visited the Athletes' Village, where she met with various teams, support staff, coaches, and volunteers. In Caithness, His Royal Highness the Duke of Rothsey, as he is known in Scotland, visited the Caithness Food Bank, where he met with staff, volunteers, and supporters to thank them for their efforts. The Caithness Food Bank provides vital support to those in need living in the area by providing food and other essentials. According to the newspaper The Evening Standard, the Duke of Rothsey made a, quote, very generous donation to the food bank, end quote. One of the volunteers at the food bank noted that the Duke donated items that the food bank was short of, including, quote, oat cakes, shortbread, sugar, and such like, end quote. Thereafter, the Duke arrived in the town of Wick, where he officially opened the newly restored Healing Hub Oxygen Therapy Center, operated by the MS Therapy Center Wick. During his visit, the Duke learned about the benefits of oxygen therapy and how it can help individuals who have health issues, such as COPD or rheumatism. The Duke of Rossi also spent time with individuals who are currently undergoing oxygen therapy, as well as staff at the Healing Hub. In Gostin, Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark, along with Her Royal Highness Princess Benedicte of Denmark, Princess of St. Wittgenstein Barrelberg and Her Majesty Queen Anne Marie of Greece watched the traditional changing of the guards in the courtyard at Gostin Slot. Earlier in the day, the Danish royal court sent a message on behalf of Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark to the people of the Faroe Islands on the occasion of St. Olaf's Day, which is a national holiday in the islands. Quote, Today is a Faroe Islands national holiday, and on that occasion, Her Majesty the Queen sends her warmest greetings to the Faroese people. St. Olaf's Day commemorates King Olaf II. King Olaf, who is also the patron saint of Norway, brought Christianity to the Faroe Islands, and since then, St. Olaf's celebrations have become quote, an essential part of the Faroe Islands summer festivities. End quote. In Copenhagen, His Highness Prince Felix of Denmark announced that he will attend the Copenhagen Business School with a focus on international shipping and trade in the fall of 2022. In an interview with a Danish magazine, Bilbede, the second son of His Royal Highness Prince Joachim of Denmark and his first wife, Her Excellency Alexandra, Countess of Fredericksburg, Prince Felix said, quote, After my internship at the shipping company Maersk, I have gained a broader understanding of the industry and I look forward to learning and studying more about it." End quote. In Tokyo, His Imperial Majesty Emperor Emeritus Akihito of Japan appeared in public for the first time after the Imperial Household Agency announced that he was diagnosed with heart failure earlier this week. This morning, Emperor Emeritus Akihito visited a research facility located at the Imperial Palace. In Bangkok, her Royal Highness Princess Maha Chakri of Thailand, representing His Majesty King Rama X, attended a state reception on the occasion of His Majesty's 70th birthday celebrations held at the Government House. In Palma de Mallorca, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain held several audiences with representatives from various Balearic institutions held at Plaza Real de la Almudaina. This morning, His Majesty met with the President of the Council de Mallorca, Ms. Catalina Cladera, the Mayor of Palma, Mr. José Gila, and the President of the Parliament, Mr. Vincent Thomas. And finally, on this day in royal history, in 1565, Mary, Queen of Scots, married her second husband, Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley, at the Palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh, Scotland. In 1981, 
His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales married Lady Diana Spencer at St. Paul's Cathedral in London. According to the BBC News, over 750 million people in 74 countries watched the royal wedding. The Prince of Wales and Lady Diana met in 1977 at Diana's ancestral home, Althorpe Estate, during a shooting party. At the time, the Prince of Wales was casually dating Lady Diana's elder sister, Lady Sarah Spencer. The couple met again in the summer of 1980 through a mutual friend. Diana was 19 years old. Soon, Charles and Diana began to date. In 1992, Diane revealed on a tape to her voice coach, Mr. Peter Setlin, which eventually turned into the documentary Diana in Her Own Words, that she and Charles, quote, met 13 times and then we got married, end quote. After the engagement announcement and several engagement interviews, the couple were finally married in a lavish wedding that, in 1981, roughly cost 48 million U.S. dollars, which today would be around 137 million U.S. dollars. The ivory silk taffeta gown with its 25-foot-long train was designed by a then-husband and wife team, David and Elizabeth Emanuel. Lady Diana wore her family tiara, known as the Spencer tiara. After the wedding, the new Prince and Princess of Wales went on their honeymoon aboard the Royal Yacht Britannia and then returned to Balmoral for the summer holiday with the family. During their stay at Balmoral, the royal couple agreed to a press conference and photo op along the River Dee. The couple were blissfully happy as they answered questions from the more than 60 journalists and photographers. The marriage, sadly, between Charles and Diana wasn't exactly, quote, the stuff of which fairy tales are made of, end quote. As the then Archbishop of Canterbury, Reverend Robert Runcie, said in his sermon to the royal couple on their wedding day. If you're interested in watching the entire royal wedding, as well as two engagement interviews from 1981, in the description box below, I will leave a direct link, or rather direct links, to several YouTube channels so you can watch them. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Saturday, July 30th, with all the latest royal news. Until then, you can visit me at my website, royalcorrespondent.com, or on Twitter. With that being said, happy Friday, everyone. <laughs> I wish you all a wonderful evening and a fantastic and relaxing weekend. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.